So good evening, good evening, good evening, you beautiful people. Um, if you're here in the evening, by the way, if you're here live, it is just gone nine o'clock on the 12th of June. Um, if you're watching on the replay, leave me a hashtag replay. That would mean the world. Um, I can see lots of people joining live now. Michael's just joined us. Thanks for being here, Michael. Um, give some people a shout out again. Josh, we've got Kerry, we've got Katora in the house. We've got Maya, we've got Rich, we've got Nick, uh, we've got Kate, we've got Joanna, um, we've got Sarah. If you're watching the replay, come and join us one week, like live if you can. We do this every single week, 9 p.m. till 10 p.m. Facebook.com forward slash ats on this TV. Got so much to discuss tonight. Um, I don't really know where to start, as always, but um, what I will start with is what I was just saying then in the little lobby area before we went live properly. Um, and that is just about sort of setting an intention for the week. I'm going to be much more conscious of doing this moving forward because this is a habit I kind of got out of the habit of doing. And yet when I was doing it, I got things done that were sometimes like extracurricular. You know, every week you've got your things that you know you've got to get done. So like, obviously we've got to live our lives. We've got to do all the, you know, adulting things like, you know, you've got to clean your apartment, you've got to wash your clothes, you've got to wash your bed in your towels, you've got to mop, hoover, all this sort of stuff, right? Then you've got your acting career on top of that. So you might be like, right, okay, I'm going to send my three introductory emails out to casting directors this week who don't know who I am. Maybe you've joined an Acts on This.TV session. You've been introduced to a new member of the industry, you know, a director you didn't know about, a casting director you didn't know about, a casting assistant, a casting associate. Like, I'm going to send my three emails out. And you've got all that down. But maybe, if you're like me, you've got other stuff floating around on the periphery that are great ideas to do or things that would actually make your life a little bit easy if you did them. But you might have 10 of these and then a week goes by and you still haven't done it, okay? I think Maya just said in the chat there that like she can't believe it's Monday again. I can't really believe it's Monday again. And I'm like, oh, that thing that I should have done at the weekend or last week that would have made everything else easier, I haven't done it. It can be acting related, it doesn't have to be. It could just be something that you want to clear out of your life. Um, and I'll share mine with you in a minute. It's nothing to do with acting. It's nothing exciting at all. Uh, but it is something that I know that if I do not schedule this week and just put like 30 minutes aside for it, I won't get it done. Michelle, good evening. How are you doing? Um, let me know what your thing might be. I'll tell you what mine is. And like I say, it's not even anything to do with the acting industry, but it could help me when it comes to acting. Um, I've got a, uh, a Nintendo Switch console that I replaced with a new Nintendo Switch console months ago. And it's been sat on my coffee table, the old one. I know I could probably get 200 quid for it on eBay. And yet I have not found the time, stupidly, to just take some photographs of it on my phone and put it on eBay. And I could have had it sold two months ago and probably got more money than I would get for it now if I'd have actually just taken time out to do it. So I know it's nothing to do with acting, right? But I could put that money into something to do with acting. You know, I could put that into, I could pay for my spotlight with that. I could pay for my equity with that. I could, um, you know, shoot a showreel scene with that, record a voice reel with that, you know, or at least put, you know, put that towards that sort of stuff. So just have a think this week. If you're watching this on the replay, you're listening on the replay, you're watching it live, and just let me know in the chat, what is your one thing you're going to commit to doing this week that you might not have committed to doing had you not been on this call? And I'll hold you accountable. I'll check in on you later this week to make sure that you uh, that you are doing it, basically. So um, yeah, keep us uh, keep us posted. Let us know if you've got any exciting news to uh, to report as well. If you've got any um, TV jobs, auditions, anybody's got any self tapes to record this week. Huge congrats to Nick Dutton. I know he's here tonight. Landed a TV job last uh, last week. Lots of people actually. In, I run a course once a year called First TV Roll Fast Track, basically just helping people land that first TV role. Or if you've got less than five TV credits, it's really relevant for anybody in that position. Um, and we had two members of that group last week land their first TV roles um, in the UK, which is wicked. So um, it was a busy week last week for people in that group. So I will be launching that program again, I think, in August. If you want to um, learn more about it and get on the waiting list, because we only let 100 people in a year. Um, the stuff I teach in that program, I don't really want to teach to more than that every year because I think it will dilute the effectiveness of it. Um, but if you go to actsonthis.tv forward slash... I think it's just first. For, let me just check. Let's have a little check. I'm going to go over to uh, the internet because I've got to go on my browser in a second to show you what's been going on on actsonthis.tv for those people who uh, have not been around for the last week. But yeah, I think it is. So if I go here like this yeah there you go um ads on this tv forward slash first and that's f-i-r-s-t um you can get on the waiting list for first tv roll fast track and um, it's a pre-recorded program with five weeks of live elements as well it's about 18 hours of coaching plus your five 
bonus session. So it probably ends up being about 25 hours of coaching plus a year's worth of support in a private Facebook group. You can watch a video there of people who've been through the program. There's Lawrence Russell, legend. Lots of other people have been through the program and landed their first TV job through this program. So uh, check it out. That's on this.tv forward slash first if you want to get on the waiting list. Um, but let us know if you've got any other exciting news, people. Uh, we'd love to know what that is. And um, we're going to recap. We'll start off by recapping what's been going down for members of Ads on this TV this week. Um, if you've not been around, if you're a member, there's lots to catch up on in the members area. If you are not a member yet, um, get a bloody membership. Like, where, where, where have you been? Every week, we literally sit down with the biggest names in the game, the best casting directors, agents, actors, writers, directors, producers. This week, we had our quarterly show Real Surgery live session, the second one we've done in 2023, with, in my opinion, the best show Real producer in the UK, Mr. Chris Stone. Um, in these sessions, we basically critique five members showreels that we choose at random. We give a eight-step formula for showreel success. And honestly, I swear to God, please, if you're if you've watched these sessions and you've not implemented every single one of the eight steps in this formula that we give away on every single session, I know sometimes it feels like we're just beating the same drum over and over again, but it's because it works. Um, if you've not implemented all eight, please just take, again, schedule an hour this week to review your show reel. Have a look if you've got everything within that reel that we, we suggest you have because it's not stuff we're making up. It's not stuff that we're just guessing at. This is, you know, experience. I've had 20, 25 years now in the acting industry, um, which is crazy. I can't believe uh, I'm 41 this year, mental. Um, Chris has edited and uh, shot like over 1,500 showreels for actors. I've watched literally, I dread to think how many thousands since running this community for the last 13 years. Um, and through implementing the stuff in my own reel, I've landed work again and again. Sometimes I've landed, I've got you know, two roles in Doctors off my showreel. I got a, a job in, in an ITV drama called After the Flood. Three weeks ago, off my showreel, and then audition for those parts. If your reel is banging, you know, you will just sometimes not even have to audition for roles if the casting director knows you, you know, and they can just put you forward through your uh, through your showreel. So it's it's a, essential um, you get that reel right. Um, I'm just going to play out a two-minute mashup of a little bit of what we showed out um, on that showreel surgery. This is one of the strongest that we've done in a while when it comes to the reels that we we, we played. Um, the reels are all chosen at random, and like sometimes we just just strike lucky and just get banger after banger. Um, so there's some really really good good stuff here. So thanks to everybody who submitted their reel. If we didn't get yours chosen, all the stuff that we um, you know we preach in these sessions uh, it just is evergreen applies to everybody. Um, implement it in your reel and here's a little bit about what you missed. In my opinion, the number one showreel producer in the UK, Mr. Chris Stone, back in the house for Showreel Surgery Live. Chris, good evening. How are you? We talk about this probably on every showreel surgery, but I still think it's worth hammering this point home. It's really understanding who you are, the level you're playing at, and who you're going to send these scenes to. Exactly. Philip Brown, the guy on the right-hand side there with Megan, um, he came to you, yeah, basically with an idea of what you wanted to, you know, what you wanted to play and to put in front of casting directors. Imagine the pain you'd feel if you'd lost your child. Lost your child because someone thought it'd be fun to get high and go for a ride. One scene with Chris, or two scenes that he shot, and then putting it in front of the right people can really lead to uh, opportunities quickly. Chris, you ready to diagnose, mate? I don't think that's possible. I think she might have been employing a metaphor there, big lad. Great. Well, we now have the exciting task of tracking down a dangerous criminal in a hospital full of sick people. This is like one of the best examples I've ever seen of J-Cuts, where the sound of the next scene proceeds. What does that smell? That is not my incense. Yeah, the oven's on fire? If you cut just one of those out or two of those out, really compress the, the, the joke down, yeah. it'll have way more impact. We've been going back and forth about my writing for months now. Daisy, there's some banging stuff here. This is this is really, that's some an good incredible stuff. headshot as well. If someone sees that headshot, Daisy, in the bottom of your email in, a, in an elegant email signature, I guarantee you they're gonna click on the link in that email signature to watch your reel. Well, are you ready? Let's play. Attention all hands. Ark Royal's attack has failed. So it works really well because you go, yep, I know exactly how I cast it. What's the one thing that you wish every actor knew when it comes to showreels? Who you work with is make, can make or break it. Like, they're not just the filmmaker, but the other person in the scene. So you might be the best actor in the world, but if you're working along some, alongside somebody who is not giving you the performance or is right for you, then it's not going to work.
such a good session. Honestly, as buzzing off it, it was such a good uh, a good night. That two and a half hours. I know it's a long one, but the full replay is in the members area for you guys right now. Uh, if you're a member of Acts on this TV, you'll find it at the top of the latest five features section. Um, so do check it out. Honestly, I love doing show real surgery. Every single one that we do is different. Um, that's the amazing thing. Obviously, you know, no actor is the same, is it? You know, and um, just seeing all those performances. And you saw, like, you know, Rich is real there. Rich Keeble's real. Incredible performances with Daniel Mays, like, you know, in, like, some awesome shows. Like, we've got some super, super talented members of Acts on this. So, um, shout out to everybody. Like I say, thanks for everybody for uh, getting involved with that. I can see loads of people setting intentions for this week, and it's... Um, it's brilliant. There's lots of people here. So Rich is saying that he's looking... No, he's changed his mind. He said he's not looking to. He's going to get episode two written of his comedy project. Rich, we'll hold you accountable to that one. You've got till Friday. Next Monday, if you come on here, Rich, and you've not done it, there will be hell to pay. Um, Kerry says, goals for this week are to email cast directors to let them know that I've signed with a new agent, Atius Management. Uh, and I'm buzzing to let them know. Started this morning, so we are on a roll now. Wicked, Kerry, and congrats. Atius Lucy... Richardson, Atius, um, love us a bit. It's brilliant. Such a hardworking agent. Um, if anyone wants to know about Atius, maybe you're looking to sign with them as well. Incredible agency in Manchester. Um, in the members area, again, and that's on this.tv is a full session, probably two hours, two and a half hours with Lucy explaining exactly what she needs to do. She needs you to do, sorry, um, in order to, you know, to be a uh, uh, potential client, you know, of hers. So, um, so watch it. Don't just reach out to agents cold. Always watch the sessions that we do with them because it's just going to give you some absolute gold to make sure that your approach is just better than 99% of other actors out there. That's that's the big advantage of acts on this that I think over anything else is, you know, ultimately, if you imagine, you know, we've got a large membership base, probably got a thousand actors in the membership, but there's probably 40,000 actors in the UK. So I don't know as a percentage, so I'll have to figure that out for me what that is. But effectively, it's giving you an upper hand, an advantage hugely an unfair advantage i would say um over probably 90 percent of the industry who are looking to achieve what you're looking to achieve um so you're effectively if you're a member <laughs> you're ethically mugging off all the other actors because you're like look i'm going to get access to this information that you know is really going to put me ahead and you're not going to bother you're going to go and uh you know try and do it on your own or do it the hard way so um congrats everybody it was a member. Thanks so much for uh, for being here. But yeah, make sure you watch that session with Lucy or any agent in the members area, any casting notes in the members area before you um, you send them an email because you're just going to get it right as opposed to just guessing, you know, and potentially not being as effective. You can't really get emails wrong. I'm not saying you're going to really screw it up. But well, you know what? You can. I think you actually can. You're not going to get them wrong to the point where, you know, they're offensive, but you can get an email wrong to the point where it will just be deleted because what you are giving in that email is actually of no use to that person. So uh, I get emails all the time sometimes and I get a little bit, I try and reply to everything, but sometimes I get replies to emails that I've sent out to the to the email list and I can tell from what the person has written to me that they haven't even bothered to read the email that I've sent. And it's things like that that frustrate me where I go, you don't really warrant a reply because what you're asking was either in the email that I've sent or you've really, really not read it because, you 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 know, you, some people reply to me like I'm an agent. Oh, are your books open? I'm like, <laughs> I run a knowledge platform for actors. I'm not an agent. If you would have just read the email for 10 seconds that I just sent you, it was patently obvious. Um, so you can get emails wrong, but you won't if you... Um, dive into those features um uh, let's have a look what else is going down uh michelle is looking forward to filming the second season of granite harbor this year yes michelle jerem um that is absolute music to my ears as well i'm so glad that went again so michelle's a member of acts on this when did you decide you're gonna be an, act an actor michelle was it 48 i think michelle decided she left the police 48 years old completely changed her career uh decides to be an actor and then at 50 landed a lead role on Granite Harbour, an incredible TV drama, and it's now just been commissioned for season two. Again, in the members area, I love doing that when we can get a member who's gone from member watching these sessions to actually being the guest for the session that we do each week. Um, there is a session with Michelle breaking down exactly how she did that, literally reverse engineering the entire process she went through to go from complete unknown to TV series regular in like two years, Michelle. I think it was like two, just over two years. So... Buzzing for you that, uh, that that's going again. Sarah's got an in-person audition for a well-known theatre company that she's uh, tried to be seen for. Um, thanks to Winterson's. Nice one. Winterson's cracking, uh, cracking agency. 
Uh, self tape tastic for Rick. Commercials, shorts, and features plus voiceover. Zoe, good evening. Thanks for uh, for being here. Um, it's all uh, it's all going down. And Rich is fifty in a week. Rich, start like a day over uh, twenty. So, <laughs> so there you go, mate. <laughs> Definitely. Now you return the 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 uh, compliment and say that I don't like a day over eighteen. Forty one though. Bloody hell! What is going on with my life? Um, Let's have a look what else is going on here, and then I'm going to play another video out. I'm just checking. There's so many comments. Thanks for all the comments tonight, folks. Um, appreciate that. Uh, and Kerry said, I've just had my real uh, scrutinized uh, on a on a surgery, and it was so useful. Oh, you mean on the show real surgery, Kerry? That was, we, I know we looked at yours on a couple ago, or have you had it done again recently? Um, but you said you've rejigged it, and it's so, so much better. Um, so, uh, so yeah, no, honestly, um, with Lucy and a banging reel, you're you're going to do well, Kerry. So uh, good luck with that. Um, right. So I am convinced, Rich. You don't look day over 20, 21, maybe. Uh, what else have I got to show you? So this tomorrow, of course, bloody hell. Right. For members of Acts on This TV, we've got an absolute banger of a session going on tomorrow night, 7.45 p.m. It's actually an extra 15 minutes later than normal because our guest has got to get from North London to South London in order to uh, to do this session with us. Um, back after three years, the incredible casting director, Mr. Johnny Boutwood, who's been working with Shaheen Baig for the last seven and a half years on some of the biggest shows in the world, practically everything that Shane Meadows has, has ever done, um, Shaheen and the team have cast. Um, out of Shaheen's office has been things like Peaky Blinders, Johnny's worked on Amazon's Hannah, he just cast with Shaheen um, as co-casting director Stephen Graham's Boiling Point. Um, you know, that's directed by Philip Barantini. Uh, we've got a session with Phil, did a podcast with Phil recently talking all about how he took the idea of Boiling Point from a short film to a feature film to a BBC TV series. If you want to know all about that, again, in the members area, there's absolute gold in there for you. Um, but yeah, Johnny Boutwood is going to be with us tomorrow night, 7.45 p.m. for a private Zoom session, basically, with all members of that's on this.tv. He's worked with Shaheen for seven and a half years, incredibly exciting on lots of massive projects, but even more exciting is the fact that in August, he's going out completely on his own. He's set up already Johnny Boutwood casting, and he's going to be working on his own projects, film and TV, um, from August. He's been a casting uh, in casting for 12 years. He's been a casting director in his own right for the last couple. He was casting associate, like I say, for Shaheen forever, like, like five, six, seven years. Um, he's an incredible guy, lots of knowledge, and I wanted to bring him on now before he launches Johnny Bartwood casting because I know everybody when he's launched the, when he's launched it and he started working every Tom Dick and Harry is going to be like Johnny come and do a workshop with me and let's you know uh, get you in for this that and the other don't do overly priced workshops by the way folks pointless um, what I want to do tomorrow night is get all of the inside info before anybody else on the setup at Johnny Boutwood Casting, you know, everything from like his website, his email address, how to get in touch with him, um, you know, what he's going to be casting, the projects that he's looking to do, and if he's got anything booked in yet, um, you know, how he's going to make that transition away from Shaheen's office into his own. Um, and I want you to have all of that knowledge before anybody else. So again, you can just get that inside info and just get that, um, you know, get the upper hand really. Um, because then you can send him your reel literally for free you don't need to spend 60 quid on a workshop if someone's going to try and get him into a workshop and you know sell you that workshop for stupid money um workshops by the way and i always i always sounds like i'm throwing shade at workshops i'm not just the price of some of them um 35 quid for a workshop's fine absolutely no no problem with that whatsoever and there are some really good workshop providers out there there's just certain people in the industry that i just see taking money i just think now you could do that for half the price and still make money so um so yeah be careful what you're uh what you're going in for but um this session if you get a membership to acts on this.tv or you get a trial if you're not a member and you've never had a trial before go to acts on this.tv forward slash trial you can join us tomorrow night for a quid if you want get this session for one pound um try the site out for seven days for a pound no obligation to take it any further than that but i just think you can get all the information that would be really useful to you on sessions like these and then just do the marketing yourself. A lot of people pay for workshops because they think it's a way to sort of get in front of a casting director and meet them. And sometimes there's merit in that, but I think you can do, you can be more effective with a banging showreel and an email for free than you can be than spending hundreds of pounds on uh, on workshops. So, um, so I'm going to play a little trailer out now from Johnny. Um, three years since he's been on Acts On This. I can't believe where the time's gone, but uh, this is happening tomorrow night, 7.45 p.m., 
Um, and let us know in the chat while this is playing if you've ever auditioned for Johnny or if you're looking to, because um, if you're looking to, potentially we'll get you on camera tomorrow as well. You can have a little chat with him. Actors, we are more than halfway through 2023 now. And if you've not landed the auditions and roles on TV that you would have liked yet, I want to invite you to this week's ActOnThis.TV live mastermind session. It's taking place on Tuesday, the 13th of June at 7.45 p.m. on Zoom with this absolute legend here. After working alongside casting director Shaheen Baig for seven and a half years, casting huge shows like The Gallows Pole, Amazon's Hannah, upcoming Stephen Graham drama Boiling Point, he's now getting ready to set up and go out on his own. It's casting director Johnny Boutwood back in the house after three years. Johnny... Thanks so much for being back, mate. Like, what are we going to be covering on Tuesday night, then? Pleasure to be back. Uh, we're probably going to cover self-tapes, uh, because I think that's kind of not stigmatism, but there's definitely some questions to answer, and kind of also back in the room, that'd be great, I think, to discuss. Also, um, open calls and discussing how we do them, and the also the professional routes that we go down with that, you know, so they work together. Yep. Um, and yeah, just anything and everything as well, because I'm an open book, so yeah. An absolute open book. It's literally been three years since Johnny's uh, Johnny's been on Acts on This.TV, so come and ask all of your questions. Um, I also want to know, Johnny, just how, like, how nervous you are about going out on your own and like all the prep that's uh, going into that now, looking for those first few jobs. So we're going to be covering all of that and more. If you want to get involved, folks, get yourself over right now to actonthis.tv forward slash live for full details of this session and every single session. We do this almost every single week with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, directors and producers in TV. The best people in telly, Johnny, including you and a little bit of pressure to end on. Why don't actors want to miss this session in particular? Um, well, I've not been here for three years, so uh, why not come and, uh, come and ask a question? It might be another three, four years until I come back. Who knows? Ex exactly. Literally, it's a once in a three year opportunity here, folks. If you want to jump on camera, ask Johnny your questions, be there. Act on this TV forward slash live. Act on this TV forward slash live if you want to check out the full schedule of live calls and be on that call. I've just noticed Christopher Nolan has just signed it up for a signed up for a one pound trial. Wasn't Christopher Nolan a really famous actor? Am I making <laughs> Am I just making that up? Maybe I'm just making that up, but um, maybe you just your either namesake or maybe there was no famous Christopher Nolan. I'm sure I recognise that name though. Someone let me know if that was a famous actor's name or whether I'm just completely mistaken. Um but uh, but yeah, honestly, going to be a fantastic session tomorrow. Um, Johnny is an open book, and um, and yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna dig into. I, I mentioned this last week, but I've got quite strong opinions on this, and I know there'll be different to other people's, and everybody's are valid, and that's why I love debate. Um, that article that went out in Variety magazine that completely slated self tapes and made them sound like the most evil thing, and that every casting director in the industry is hateful, and that they just these self tapes are awful. Um, I said last week there was so many elements of that I couldn't get on board with. I can really sympathize with people who have kids um, and, you know, would struggle to get a self-tape done at the last minute if they've got family and stuff like that. I mean, although there's pros and cons even to that, isn't there? Because I'm like, well, actually, you know, you can do a self-tape maybe if you're lucky enough that your friend's family or partner could look after your baby at your home. You could do a self-tape without having to pay for childcare. You wouldn't have to travel there used to be this thing where like everybody would slag off last minute auditions in London, especially if they lived in the north where I live, because train fare was so expensive. And then self tapes came along and fixed all that. And yet the same voices still want to complain about self tapes. It's like some people will never be happy because rather than put their energy into actually their career being positive, enjoying their lives, they want to blame something for why they're not where they're at sometimes. And I get that. I completely understand that, you know. Um, they're just not in the in the best place mentally. Um, but I just think self-tapes, to a certain extent, are a real gift, particularly for the smaller roles. I think if you've got something meatier, you're auditioning for something that, you know, you would need a bit of direction on. Maybe, you know, you've got two or three pages of dialogue. You would like a director in the room with you to sort of help you and vibe off. That's a bit different. But I think for the smaller roles, you know, where you maybe you've got, I don't know, six, seven lines, it's brilliant to do a self-tape. Have as many cracks at it as you want. Do a really good job. And then, you know, those six or seven lines... I had a, that after the flood job that I did for ITV, that was only six, seven lines. That's 2,000 pounds. The one that me and Petch filmed in Belfast last week was, um, we got paid three grand each for that. And that was half a day's work. Like, I'm not going to kick off about having to do a self-tape to get three grand for half a day. 
just think it's about how you sort of look at the world right now. And I get it. People are in a bit of a bad place mentally and there's loads of reasons for that. You know, I don't wake up every day. Sometimes I, want, I don't want to kiss the world every morning I wake up. But you've got to look for like the positives. You've really got to look for you know, what you can be grateful for in this industry. And I don't think cell takes are all that evil. I'm sure there are. And I'm, I, you know, I'm sure people will give me examples that are completely valid where, you know, they, they have been problematic for them. I'm not saying, um, saying that they're perfect, but I just thought that article was so negative. I was like, wow, like who's written this? They're not, they've got other issues in their life that are not self tapes that are making them really unhappy. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about that tomorrow with Johnny um, and also open calls. So for Boiling Point, massive, massive BBC drama. Johnny and Shaheen put an open call out initially and that was for anybody who worked in hospitality who wanted to maybe get involved with this program. Um, and again, actors will have very mixed opinions on that. On one hand, they're like, well, we're fucking professionals. We've trained. We should get in there first. Um, and yet, you know, when they were first starting out their career, they probably would have loved the chance to audition for something as big as that without having loads of experience. So you can't please everybody. But I think Johnny and Shaheen, uh, Shaheen did a really great job of that balance of employing professional actors with other people, you know, um, you know, from that world who had real lived experience. Boiling Point set in a kitchen, um, in a high-end kitchen in a fancy restaurant. So they were looking for people who had hospitality experience um, and, you know, not necessarily loads of acting experience. Uh, but they're not, they were obviously looking for, you know, for the bigger roles, people, you know, had to have you know acting experience otherwise you know they wouldn't be able to carry a role of that size but all the controversial stuff tomorrow night i'm telling you but like i say I'm not saying my opinion on anything is correct you know these are my opinions now i'm totally open to somebody giving me their opinion and i might change my mind i might be like actually you know what yeah you've got a, a real good point on that so um i think that's how progress happens i think if we're so blinkered into thinking that you know only we're right and no one else has got any you know any uh legitimacy with their points of view i think that's where you know it's where wars start we don't we want love not war folks um zoe said i would love to speak to johnny again after the workshop i did oh do you do a workshop with johnny as i felt i didn't get enough time to really get to know him again that's the only problem with bloody workshop zoe in it unfortunately it's never the casting director's fault or the casting associates or assistants faults at these workshops because they just get brought in and a lot of the time they don't even know what these facilitators are charging um even though I think the CDG, part of the guidelines of the Casting Directors Guild is that the, the organiser has to tell them, but I don't know if that's been the case with everything. Um, and, you know, the facilitator, I mean, a lot of them don't give a shit. They just want to cram in 25 actors into a room, charge them all 60 quid, you know, make that four or five grand in a day, pay the Casting Directors their 300 quid or whatever and just bank the rest of the money. Um, so that's the only problem. You don't often get a lot of time unless the workshops are ran by generally actors who care um, that's what I found that they're actors generally who have, who have been on the, the, the other end of that, or they've not felt they've got value. It's the whole reason I set up acts on this. Um, and then they, they actually give a shit and they go, right, we're going to limit this to 12 or 15 people max. And we're going to give a three hour session, not a two and a half hour session with 25 people. So you all get 90 seconds with the casting director. Um, so again, just be careful. Um, and you okay, so you said that I did a workshop. So yeah, the workshop provider was rubbish. You just said Zoe, 60 quid for two minutes with Johnny. This is what I mean. It pisses me off. I hate it. And this is why I'm a bit vocal about it. And like I say, I'm not slagging off all, all workshops, but I'm slagging off those ones. And people, they need to just up their game, step up and do better. And they, But you know what? The actors, hopefully, Zoe, you know, now it's a learning experience for you. You've realized and you won't fall for that again. And this is what the workshop providers don't even realize because now you will not go and buy another workshop with them, Zoe. So they might have got the 60 quid off you, but if they'd have charged you 30 quid for that, you might have done another five with them. So in the long run, they earn more money, but they're so fucking greedy, you know, and short-sighted that they, they just snatch the money, screw you over. You know, there's no way I would have been able to run acts on this for 13 years if in year one, all I did was try and make money out of actors and screw him over, because you wouldn't be here for year two, would you? You'd be like, I'm not paying, not paying him anything for that. You know, I've managed to build acts on this into a, you know, a really thriving community, a decent business, through actually giving value. I charge six pounds a week. It's nothing. You know, you, you will literally pay more than that. These fancy, normally I say it's like a latte, but um, lattes aren't as expensive as that. But I'll tell you what are. I saw these kids today in Starbucks buying the, the most delicious looking drinks, but I bet they're about a thousand calories. Like a, 
strawberries and cream, chocomocha, super duper, frappalicious, creamy thing. Um, they were five pounds fifty for one of those. I'm like, that's almost a week's membership to act on this, and you would pay that for one drink at Starbucks. You know, these workshop providers are charging ten times that, and whereas I'm giving you two and a half hours with somebody, they're giving you two minutes with them. So. Yeah, be careful, folks. Be careful. Michelle, you've just reminded me of something. Michelle Jerome here said, did you manage to book my agent for a session? Michelle, I feel awful. I didn't email your agent back. Or did I? Fuck, it was when I was in America. I think I might have done. And I can't remember. Shit. Please don't let me forget that. Michelle, could you just email Ross at this.tv now and just put, oi, dickhead, agent. Just something like that. It will remind me. I've got the email from your agent. Um, because she sounds brilliant. I would love to have her on at on this. Michelle's got a fantastic agent, um, uh, reps lots of really great people and seems really open to chatting. So yeah, uh, Michelle, I'm so sorry. And I've done that with someone else as well. Someone else talked to a, an actor recently who I was like, yeah, let's get them on. And because I've been away, I've completely forgotten. That's completely my bad. Um, apologies about that. Uh, let's have a look. Christopher Nolan is a director, director of the Dark Knight. Yes, that's what Christopher Nolan was. Of course. Well, Christopher Nolan has just joined us on this on a one-pound trial. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks, Christopher Nolan. Um, maybe it is the Christopher Nolan. And he's, he's Christopher Nolan. If you're on the Facebook Live, let me know. Um, and let me know if you're just secretly just swinging on by to uh, see what we're doing. Um, right, let's have a look. Uh, Josh says, I'm still not letting go of the fact that I got submitted for a delivery driver role, driver role on Boiling Point and I didn't get an audition. Josh is a delivery driver in real life. That's why he's saying that. He normally bags all of the acting roles that are of delivery drivers. Josh, I can't believe it, mate. And I know that role because I read it at the read-through. It's a guy delivering. It's not out yet, is it? I can't tell you what it is. We can't say that. But yeah, it's a guy delivering to the uh, to the restaurant. You well could have done that, mate. You really, really could have uh, could have done that. Definitely. Um, and Zoe says, I think this workshop provider didn't disclose it, as in the price they were paying, they were charging. They didn't tell the casting rights of that, um, as they don't disclose to the actors either. That's something else I fucking hate. It's got to stop swearing. Sorry. If anybody, anybody is not transparent with their pricing in this industry, like something dodgy is going on. So, you know, anyone who's not proud to shout about what they're charging for their products online... I'll shout all day long in front of anybody how much acts on this is, how much first TV roll fast track is, how much bulletproof actor is, the courses that I run. Um, and I'll, I'll display all of the charges up front. So like, it's just on a plate. If you want to get involved in it, you do. If you don't, it's totally fine. The, the providers who are like, oh, we just announced this person for a workshop, um, you know, 12 places available, email now for details. Fuck you. You want to try and get me into some sort of pressure selling funnel? Because what they'll do is you'll ring up. I promise you this is what they'll do. You'll email or you'll phone them. And if you email them, you say, oh, hi, I'm just inquiring about the Johnny Boutwood uh, um, workshop. Here's what they'll do, Zoe, and let us know if they did this, because this is what, what I've experienced. They will email you back and say, oh, hi, Zoe. Thanks for inquiring about, about Johnny. Yeah, um, it's going to be on, on whatever. It's £60. They've not disclosed that in public. Um, and um, and it's been, they've been, places have been flying out. We've actually only got two left. Do you want one? And it, and it pressures you. They've probably sold none. But it pressures you into going, fuck, I'm going to miss out. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, I don't have time to think about it. Yeah, yeah, I'll have one. And then before you know it, you've paid 60 quid for something that you weren't even sure you wanted. So it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit sales tactics. And if that happens, screenshot the email, tweet it and say, you know, at equity, do you think this is right? Because um, we need people to just stop being sharks in this industry, <laughs> basically. <laughs> really gets my goat, as you can uh, as you can tell. Um, right, so let me... Set, let me oh, we've only got 20 minutes left. I've got a little few other things to cover, if that's all right. I've just gone off on a right rant there. Um Tweet me though, act on this TV. Let me know if you agree or if you think I'm just a bit of twisted, jaded old man now. I've hit 40. Just had enough of people taking actors' money and giving them no no value. Um, this Saturday, I am recording an incredible um, exclusive podcast for Acts on This.TV members with a brilliant director, TV director called Azur Salim. I'll bring his picture up on camera now. Um, here he is now. I don't know what shoot that was on. Um, he is the guy who directed After the Flood, this new ITV drama that I had a role in a few weeks ago. Um, if I go over to his IMDb, 
Uh, let's read a little bit about him. It says, uh, Azur is a graduate of the London Film School. Recent works include Doctor Who. He's next up on Neil uh, Gaiman's and Nancy Boys. That's got Whoopi Goldberg in it. I don't know a lot about that. Um, it's an adaptation for Amazon Studios. Um, he's also a Screencraft Fellowship finalist, Script Pipeline semi-finalist, and Final Draft Big Break quarter finalist. <laughs> Does a lot of competitions, clearly. Um, he has just, if we have a look at his... Uh, at his credits here yeah so he's got a nancy boys that's coming out uh later this year and after the flood will be out later this year but there's doctor who as well he's basically just started in high-end drama um after the flood's wicked really really great drama can't wait for you to watch that and nancy boys i don't know much about but it's got some really really strong cast in it um and what i loved about being on set with as is he was probably the most chilled director i've ever worked with like on his set, I mean, we had three scenes to film in a day, which isn't loads, but on his set, like everyone was just buzzing. Everyone was just happy. He really looked after everyone from lead cast to supporting artists. There was no hierarchy. He was really up for hearing your opinions on stuff. Worked really well with his DOP. All the cast loved him. You know, um, there were some huge names in, uh, in, in this drama as well that he's working with. Everybody just couldn't speak more highly of Az. And I was like, as I do a podcast, and my flat is like five minutes away from the location. Any chance you want to pop round and we'll do a chat? And he was like, yeah, mate, I'd love to. Um, so we're going to be doing that on Saturday. It's going to be like a, probably a two-hour in-depth podcast, really on his journey into directing, how he works with actors, how he, you know you can get on his casting radar. Um I, you know, and also about his life as well. These chats when we do the podcast are quite deep in terms of just life around success and how you have success in the TV industry. I'm just wondering while we're here live, if you've got any um, topics of discussion you would want, you know, you would want us to look at um, with a director like us. And if you tell me, I'll write them down. I'll make sure that we, uh, you know, that we cover them because um, I think he's going to go on. He reminds me of Lewis Arnold when Lewis Arnold started doing big TV drama. Lewis is now one of the biggest um Casting rights, it's not casting rights, it's biggest directors in TV. Um, as I feel is just going to go on to you know, sort of follow, uh, you know, follow suit. And you know, he's, he's already casting, but not casting, he's already directing, got casting rights on the brain, um, massive stuff. And um, because he's just so brilliant, I think he's just going to end up doing more and more. So let us know in the chat if there's anything that you, um, you know, you would want us to, um, to talk about. And we will get the uh, we will get the answers for you. And then also, lastly, um, again, this is just looking for your input. If I go back to my web browser, once a quarter, me and Petch, uh, rec- producer Petch, record our own in-depth podcast called Table Talk. This is a quarterly feature for the community as well. And basically, over a quarter, Petch collates all of the burning themes within the industry. So no doubt that cell tape talk will come up in this and this sort of stuff. Um, and he collates all of these these topics of discussion, and we just chew the fat really openly and honestly about them. And I just give my absolute unfiltered, honest opinion. So many times I feel I'm going to get cancelled for like just calling out bullshit in the industry, but I don't think I will. I don't think I will because I think most people are like, yeah, you're probably right, mate. Um, but again, we're recording another one of these on Saturday as well. Once we've done the podcast with As, so if you've got a topic that you would like me and Petch to give you our absolute, brutally honest opinion on, um. Again, please either drop me an email, Ross at on this dot TV, um, or just leave a comment now in on Facebook or if you watch on the replay, um, leave a comment on Facebook as well. One thing I want to talk about that I'm seeing actors do that I think is potentially destructive um is um paying for verification on social media platforms. Now you can buy a blue tick on Twitter and you can buy a blue tick on Instagram. I mean, it's absolutely fine if you want to do that. You know, I've got I've got one, I've got one for act on this um as well you know that was just something that i i wanted to do personally so i could upload videos over two minutes and 20 it wasn't anything to do with you know trying to be a celebrity or be like oh look at me there were there were practical reasons for for doing that i'm not doing it on instagram you can buy it on instagram i don't give a fuck i mean i've sworn again i don't care (laughs) shit (laughs) i don't care i hope there's no children around um about doing it for instagram twitter um I wanted to because I could upload, you know, what I want to do occasionally is I want to upload a full replay of a session that we've done on AtsOnThis.tv and just leave it live on Twitter for 24 hours just so people who aren't members can see what we do. Couldn't do that without verification, without getting Twitter blue. But I'm seeing a lot of actors who I'm seeing on one hand say they have no money for their spotlight, they have no money for um, showreel store, for headshots, you know, they're really struggling. And it's a real thing that, you know, like I think we're all feeling it more than 
more than I can remember, to be honest, in terms of like the, the cost of stuff now is, I think, more expensive than the only other time is like 2009 when the shit really hit the fan with the banks. Um, it is a much harder time financially right now. Um, and then I'm seeing people pay 11 99 a month for nothing but a blue tick on Instagram that enables you to do nothing extra whatsoever bar like pretend that you're cool or something. Um, most people don't need, unless I had, you know, I've got a business that's on this, which is why I needed the verification on Twitter because I've got videos that are longer than two minutes and 20 and lots of them that I would like to upload. Um, is, there's a lot of actors where that won't apply. You know, that won't really matter. As long as you've got your show reel down, you, you know, it's totally cool. Um, and yet they're saying that they've got no money and yet they're going on Twitter buying a, a tick for 11 quid, going on Instagram buying a tick for 12 quid. And then before you know it, you know, they nearly spent 25 quid a month on nothing. And I'm like, you, what you're doing there is you're filling a void inside you because you don't feel good enough. You know, you're filling some sort of empty void that says, oh, if I've got a tick, I feel special. And like the celebrities, the fact that, you know, everyone can buy them now, it's not special, is it? Um, and then they're not invested in themselves properly. They're sort of getting a short term high. And then they're still in pain in their career, like down the line. So again, that's just something that I want to tackle head on as well in table talk. But if there's anything um, that you would like me and Petch to, uh, you know, to talk about, then um, do let me know. I would love to know, uh, you know, your your thoughts on that. And Zoe says, hit the nail on the head. Is that about those workshops? That's what they do. They'll say, email us for details so they can give you false scarcity in the email reply. They'll say, we've only got one place left, Zoe, do you want it? They've not because they're cramming 25 people in and they announced it three minutes ago. Um, don't fall for this bullshit. Um, Natalie says, I'm here on the way back from rehearsal, but I've been missing these sessions. Natalie, a great to have you. I hope the rehearsal went really well. Um, let us know what it is you're rehearsing for and um, we'll put a shout out for you. If you if it's a theatre thing or you need people to go down, um, tweet me at Act On This TV. We'll make sure we retweet it to everybody for you. Um, try and get some uh, some people down. So um, so that's really, yeah, state of, the, state of the union at the moment. What, um, what burning topics have you got? We've got like probably 10 minutes left. I'm going to um, say so I'm doing a read through tomorrow morning for a, uh, a new Netflix show called Fool Me Once. Stars Michelle Keegan, um, Richard Armitage, uh, Joanna Lumley. Got some brilliant people in it. Um, and it's the last block read through tomorrow. So I'm not in it for transparency. I just go to these read throughs to... Um, read for all of the characters that can't be there. And tomorrow, actually, none of the cast are there. It's just me and a couple of other actors reading both episodes in front of the exec producers and Netflix um, just so they can get a feel for it, which is pretty cool. So um, I've got a lot of scripts to mark up. So probably going to finish this at 5 to 10, a little bit earlier than normal, just so I can get onto that. So I'm not up till midnight because we've got to be there at half eight. So it's a um, a pretty early start. But yeah, let us know just for 10 minutes what what sort of things are going down in your career in the industry that you're seeing that you think are interesting discussion topics. Uh, I'm just going to refresh the feed here. See what comments are coming through. Oh, Facebook's decided not to give me any comments. <laughs> Come on, Facebook. There you go. There you go. I've got them now. Uh, definitely. Right. So, yeah. So, um, so let us know, yeah, what you... Uh, you think are sort of hot potatoes right now. They can be controversial. I quite like, but... <laughs> <laughs> bit of gossip, bit of, bit of controversy in the uh, in the industry, um, and let me know what you think of self tapes. Going back to that thing before, like I'm like totally cool with people completely disagreeing with me. If you think self tapes are absolutely shit and they should be abolished, let me know. But I just think they're 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 really beneficial to actors who either live outside of London and want to audition for stuff in London or the north and want to audition for stuff in the north. Um, they enable you to do stuff on your own terms. They enable you to have a few goes at something. If you've got a decent reader um, that you're comfortable with, that's sometimes less nerve-wracking than being in the room with someone you don't know. Um, you've not got the 100 quid tra train fare down to uh, London if you're in the north to go and audition for something for five minutes. You don't have to pay for your food on the way down. It can be a big rigmarole going out of London for a day. You think, oh, it's only two hours on the train. It's fine. But actually, the round trip can sometimes end up being like more like seven, eight hours. Um, but I just think, yeah, they sort of like have leveled the playing field a little bit. Um, but I did see low, I just saw the article and thought, oh God, so, so negative. Um, Kerry says totally all, all for the cell tape culture, so much easier and a lot less anxiety inducing. I agree, Kerry, honestly, like I said, they're not perfect. There's certainly some times where I'd go, oh, this would be cool if I was in the room with somebody else. But often they'll, you will be anyway. That'll just be the first round will be a self-tape. You'll either get the job off the self-tape or if you don't, you'll be invited in for a second round. 
um, in person. And um, and you don't need any real expensive kit to do a good self-tape. Yes, you could get a pop-up backdrop that I'd recommend and some basic lighting, but you don't need it. You know, your phone is perfectly capable um, if you've got decent light in a, in a room and a plain wall. Like, that's literally all you need. So... I think people are just looking for problems that that don't exist. Um, Rich says streaming platforms driving large amounts of content leading to lower quality thoughts. That's quite an interesting one. I think what um, I'm finding with the streaming platforms, just from what I'm hearing behind the scenes with production companies, is it's a lot harder for production companies to make money. So what they used to do, Rich, is they would get a show and then they could sell the rights to, I don't know, like a, a company in North America who would have the North American rights, and they could sell the rights to the Far East, they could sell the rights to Europe, and then they'd make multiple deals across the globe with all these different people. So, you know, they could ultimately charge more, really, because they've got more deals, you know, on the stuff. And then what happens is when Netflix buys something, because ultimately they've got the monopoly on the world, they hit one button, and that show goes out in like 129 countries or something like that. Um, that Netflix hold all the power when it comes to negotiating and money because it's sort of like you can only do one deal and the deal's with Netflix and they have all territories. Um, so I've heard that, you know, production companies are being squeezed a bit. It's harder to, for them to be able to actually make make money. And it surprised me because when I interviewed Nicola Schindler, who's one of the most talented like producers in, well, the world, to be honest. Um, seven times BAFTA winning producer Nicola Schindler. She owns uh, Key Street Productions now. Did um, She set up Red Red Production Company back in the day. Was hugely successful with it. Um, there's a podcast with Nicola in the members area. You should all go and listen to about the business side of the business. And I was really surprised when she was like, not all productions make us money. Like she will lose, the company will lose money on some shows. And I always thought that all of them would be at least break even. You know, I think, oh, you're probably going to make profit on... Yeah, you're making a TV show. You're putting months of work into it, millions of pounds. You're gonna make money out of that. And she's like, no, not all, not all shows. Yeah, some are loss leaders. Um, you know, and then they might. I get. I guess the thing there is they go right. Okay, maybe they get a different. You know, a second season out of something, even if it's you know not made them money. It still might have done well. You know, viewing figures wise. Um, and then maybe they make money the second time around. I don't know how it how it kind of works there, but um, but yeah, I just know streaming platforms have made that a little bit harder, Rich, but. Um, there probably is more content than ever before. But on the other hand, you've got, well, there's more opportunity. It's not all going to be good uh, quality stuff, but if they're making more stuff, they're going to need more actors. Be interesting how AI, that's a topic to talk about on Table Talk, how AI is going to affect um, the industry, ultimately, the music industry and the acting industry. Um, those songs that have come out from Drake and someone else, they did another song where they just basically... Um, used AI to match somebody's voice, to match Drake's voice, um, you would not really know it wasn't Drake. And the songs are really good. And you're like, well, actually, why do we need Drake now? It's like, <laughs> it's crazy. It is crazy. So that, that'll be an interesting, uh, an interesting one. Zoe says she loves self-tapes. It means I've been able to create my own content um, that helped me to make uh, connections online. Yeah, that self-tapes are great just for showing, just documenting your ability as well. Um, you know, you get really good at them when they're not auditions. When they are auditions, you know, you'll feel right at home. Um, Nick says self tapes for the win. Um, no one knows where I live. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> Nick's getting jobs in the UK, and he might not actually even live in the UK, but he can get here quite quickly. Um, but through self tapes, Nick, yeah, you know, you're able to audition for stuff, mate, when you're not even in the country. Uh, Michelle says she flew back from France for an in person audition for a hundred pound return. There was a lad in the waiting room who'd paid 135 quid from the north of England on the train. Yeah. No, honestly, it is. And like, you know, I mean, that's a lot of money, isn't it? 130, I mean, 100 quid is a lot of money. Uh, I know they said, no, they called you by your second name there, Michelle. 100 quid is a lot of money, isn't it, Jerem? Um, but uh, 135 quid, yeah, for a train. You can't afford to do many of them a month, can you really? Not in this day and age. So yeah, self-tapes are uh, are a way to, to do it on the cheap. Katora says, I love self-tapes, so much flexibility and control. Jay says, controversially, I think Casting Directors Productions, which do ask you to audition in person, should pay or give a financial contribution to your travel. That usually does happen for recalls, Terry. You won't get them on the, on the initial audition, but if you get recalled... You would often get a recall fee. It might not cover the whole of the train fare when, I mean, I'm talking before pre-pre- pre, 
uh, that thing that happened a couple of years ago that we will never mention again. Uh, pre that, if I was getting recall fees, it'd be like 50, 60 pounds. My train fare still might be like 80 from Manchester to London. But um, but yeah, you know, I think that, you know, there's there's merit in that sometimes. Um, Josh says more casting directors and directors know me due to self tapes. Plus I can do them after work and save days off for when I book the job. It's so flexible. Yep. Totally, uh, totally agree with that as well. Um, Maya says, I actually requested the blue tick on Instagram as my son said it would be cool. He's an influencer on YouTube, but I couldn't get it to work. So I'm getting a refund, but you are right. I don't think I bother. Don't bother Maya. Um, it's just, the thing is because you can buy it now. I just think it's almost going to be like, you'll stand out soon if you don't have it. <laughs> because I think everybody's going to get it. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it on Insta. I might get it for acts on this. Just, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to impersonate acts on this, but just because it's a business. But for myself, um, unless there is a uh, practical reason for it, if you get access to some other feature that you don't get, if it's literally just a blue tick, pointless. Or you know what? If you've got the money to buy it, this is the other thing. Like if you've got, you know, if you're doing well and you've got the money, buy whatever you want. I'm not going to tell anybody not to buy stuff that they want. You know, spend money on absolutely whatever you want. I just see the people who are, on one hand, you know, struggling. Like, I'm seeing them put posts up that are like, oh, you know, struggling with this or that, or I had to cancel my equity, I had to cancel my spotlight. And I'm like, but your spotlight is like 15 quid or something like that a month, and it could earn you thousands of pounds if you get a job from it. Your blue ticks are 25 quid a month for Twitter and Instagram, and it's going to do jack shit for you. Um, bar, maybe make you feel special. But soon, everyone's going to have them. So, you know, you'll be more special if you don't. Um, Self-tapes uh, for childcare worries, says Kanke. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like I say, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have someone who can look after your kids, I guess, at home whilst you do a tape, then you're saving all that money on uh, on travel and, and childcare as well. Um, Terry says, I've just booked a return trip to a great regional theatre that I've got an audition at, but it has cost me 40 quid with a rail card. Uh, very grateful to be auditioning for a brilliant project at Fantastic Theatre, but that's still a big financial cost to attending person. It is forty quid, still, you know, still a fair, fair chunk of uh, chunk of change, definitely. And Maya, all these Monday Night Lives um, will stay on Facebook forever. Um, but actually, just so if people might not know this, if you go to YouTube.com, let me show you. Um, I upload all of these to YouTube. By the way, there's we put out more. Quite proud of this. More free content than anyone else in the acting industry. Um, and I still think that even at six six pounds a week, oh, let me turn myself off here. Um, the premium side of stuff, I think is the most value, you know, with the most value packed stuff in the industry as well. So anyone says, oh, but you know, oh, why do you have to pay for the Zoom calls? Well, if you've not got the resources to do that yet, go and have a look at the 700 hours worth of free content on, uh, on YouTube. So uh, these say these Facebook Live replays here, um, that you see these all go up i'll probably put tonight's up tonight this will probably be on online before midnight tonight um so if you go to youtube.com forward slash act on this tv um we put loads of free content out Petch does a round table every so often with members of acts on this called Petch and pals there's some uh, round table um exclusives there as well Stephen graham and hannah walters did a time exclusive with us when time came out starring Stephen, hannah and sean bean um, that's on there as well. We've got um, a couple of member spotlights. We're going to start doing these again. Um, member spotlights. That was Lawrence Russell when he got a, uh, a TV job in EastEnders. Petch did a... He must have, oh, I must have done a member spotlight with Petch when he got his job in Coronation Street. And then these here, these are, this make you, these will make you laugh. I used to do a vlog for two years called Watch Ross where we'd go behind the scenes. Petch would follow me around with the camera for three days of the week, all day. And we'd go to auditions. He'd, he'd come into voiceover sessions with me, business meetings when I was setting up a clothing company with my mate, Sean. <laughs> um, and then we'd often drop in on people um, to have a chat. So like Peter Hunt came round uh, on that one. We've got Steve Everts came round there. Brian E and Nicola Bolton came round from Nicola Bolton Management. Ryan Clayton came round there. Um, Chris Hitchin came round. Uh, Melissa Johns. We'd always have like, there's uh, Isabel Steele from EastEnders. We'd always have like... Um, some actors and stuff just dropping into my apartment just for a chat. So um, you can go and watch hundreds of hours worth of content for free on youtube.com forward slash act on this TV. Um, and let us know if you do. I want to bring that blog back. I've got no time, absolutely no time to bring the blog back. But 
it was good. I just didn't want people to think I didn't practice what I preached. I was like, I'm telling everybody to do all this stuff to move their acting career forward. And I just thought it'd be so hypocritical if, if people didn't know I was doing it myself. So I thought, let's film it, prove it. Um, he caught on camera, Petch, me getting the biggest voiceover job I'd ever got in my life. We caught the phone call when my agent phoned me to tell me that we, we'd booked that job. Like, So it's cool. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, it's quite nostalgic looking back at it now. But yeah, you can watch all the Monday Lives on YouTube, Maya, um, and loads of other content as well. Right, going to be wrapping it up in a couple of minutes. It looks like everybody loves self-tapes, to be honest. The consensus is self-tapes is, you know, the way forward. Becky, how are you doing? Says, I'm listening in uh, while hopefully falling asleep up at 4.30 for a 6.30 call time. Well, Becky, you're obviously doing some good work if you're getting called early. So, um, yeah, we're just about to finish. You'll have to put the replay on, Becky. <laughs> you can fall asleep to me whinging about workshops that are ripping people off. Don't fall for their nonsense. Um, right, what else have I got to play yet? I'm going to play out the Johnny Boutwood uh, invite video again. Don't forget, yeah, tomorrow night, 7.45 p.m. Johnny's only been on Acts on this once before three years ago. It's probably going to be another two years, maybe, you know, maybe more till he's back on again. Don't miss your opportunity to join us tomorrow night. Um, that's on this.tv forward slash live or get a, get a trial if you've never had a membership before. That's on this.tv forward slash trial. Um, if you've had a trial, don't get another trial because the, the system will automatically refund it for you and cancel it. Um, if you've had one seven day trial, that's sort of all anybody's allowed. Um, but get a membership. That's on this.tv forward slash live. Join us live for these sessions um, every single week. And I promise you, if you act on the information, you really will fly. You've seen it tonight. Like people like Michelle joined ads on this at 48, just freaking hustled her ass off, implemented everything, got great coaching, great training, went out there, worked on her craft, and now is a series regular in Granite Harbor. David Carpenter, another young actor, really young, like 17, 18 when he joined ads on this. Um, he did the same, and now he's starring in ITV's The Bay. He's filming, like, he's just filmed the second season of that. Like, for him, I think that was season four. Um, like, honestly, this stuff works. We get people every single week posting the Facebook group. They've just got their first TV job. They just put another job. They just sign with another agent because they are actually implementing what's going on on this site. Don't watch passively. Um, take control. You have the power, um, folks. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to finish again just playing uh, Johnny's uh, little invite out. But that's 7.45 p.m. tomorrow. That's on this.tv forward slash live if you want to uh, get involved. Um, and just thanks again for everybody being there, uh, being here. Really appreciate you, honestly, like coming out every week and hanging out because um, I know you've got Netflix probably and there's maybe more exciting things to watch uh, than me. But um, but I appreciate you listening to my rants. Um, love to everybody. Have an amazing week. Do that thing we said at the beginning that is like that one thing that maybe you weren't going to do this week. You've been putting off. But now I've reminded you of it. You're going to do it. You're going to commit to just blocking out maybe 30 minutes of time to do that thing this week. Um, do it. I promise you, your future self will thank you for it. You will feel better for uh, for having done it. And with that, yeah, I'm going to go and put that Nintendo Switch on eBay because that's been the thing that's sat on my coffee table for months. And I know I could get money for it if I just took a little bit of action for 30 minutes. Um, so join us tomorrow night. Until then, love to you all. Um, have an amazing week. And I'll catch up with you soon. Bye for now. Actors, we are more than halfway through 2023 now, and if you've not landed the auditions and roles on TV that you would have liked yet, I want to invite you to this week's ActOnThis.TV live mastermind session. It's taking place on Tuesday, the 13th of June at 7.45 p.m. on Zoom with this absolute legend here. After working alongside casting director Shaheem Baig for seven and a half years, casting huge shows like The Gallows Pole, Amazon's Hannah, upcoming Stephen Graham drama, Boiling Point, he's now getting ready to set up and go out on his own. It's casting director Johnny Boutwood back in the house after three years. Johnny... Thanks so much for being back, mate. Like, what are we going to be covering on Tuesday night, then? Pleasure to be back. Uh, we're probably going to cover self-tapes, uh, because I think that's kind of not stigmatism, but there's definitely some questions to answer, and kind of also back in the room, that'd be great, I think, to discuss. Also, um, open calls and discussing how we do them and the also the professional routes that we go down with that, you know, so they work together. Yep. Um, and yeah, just anything and everything as well, because I'm an open book, so yeah. An absolute open book. It's literally been three years since Johnny's uh, Johnny's been on Acts on This.TV, so come and ask all of your questions. Um, I also want to know, Johnny, just how, like, how nervous you are about going out on your own and like all the prep that's uh, going into that now, looking for those first few jobs. So we're going to be covering all of that 
and more. If you want to get involved, folks, get yourself over right now to actonlist.tv forward slash live for full details of this session and every single session. We do this almost every single week with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, directors, and producers in TV. The best people in telly, Johnny, including you, and a little bit of pressure to end on. Why don't actors want to miss this session in particular? Um, well, I've not been here for three years, so uh, why not? Come and, uh, come and ask a question. It might be another three, four years until I come back. Who knows? Ex- exactly. Literally, it's a once in a three year opportunity here, folks. If you want to jump on camera, ask Johnny your questions, be there. Actonlist.tv forward slash live. I thought my world was going to end.